okay so good afternoon we will uh, uh, continue with the cryptography now so far in cryptography we have discussed up to symmetric cryptography techniques right what are the symmetric cryptography techniques we have checked so in symmetric we have seen des then multiple des then we also checked the aes okay these are all symmetric encryption techniques i gave a very broad overview of asymmetric techniques right and the asymmetric cryptography is also known as public key cryptography okay why it is called public key cryptography because you are encrypting with public key decrypting with the private key so just again when we look at look back there is sender there is a receiver so alice and then bob what happens alice has the key pair public key and private key bob has the key pair public key and private key right in asymmetric cryptography every communicating node every communicating user will have a key pair okay so when once they have the key pair one of the key is public and one of the key is kept private now how do they communicate now alice want to send a piece of information to bob now the piece of information is p that it gets encrypted with the help of public key of bob so encrypt it with the help of public key of bob now the point is since in alice is using which key for encryption purpose public key of bob and obviously we are saying it's public so and hence alice knows the public key right so create the cipher text sent it to bob so you will have in the in the communication channel the cipher text who is listening to this communication channel eve is listening to this communication channel even if eve captures the cipher text in order to decrypt the cipher text what eve need is private key of bob right so now the point is when once bob receives this cipher text bob gets back the plain text by performing the decryption over cipher text with the help of private key of bob okay couple of points you guys need to understand number 1 encryption encryption is done with the help of encryption is done with public key of public key of yeah in this case bob is receiver fine so encryption happened with the public key of the receiver and hence it is also called as public key encryption because encryption happened with the case of public key now second what is the second point decryption is done with the private key of private key of receiver and in order to do perform decryption what is needed is private key and private key is known only to the receiver who is nothing but here bob eve will not know that part particular private key so now the point is what is the we are doing with uh, sender's public key and private key what is that we are doing with sender's public key and private key 
when Bob is sending some message to Alice, what, which keys would be used? When Bob is sending something to Alice, whose keys would be used? Alice. So, point is always the receiver's key pair are used and hence even if Eve captures this particular message, Eve cannot do anything because to perform something Eve needs the private key of that particular whoever it is, so the receiver. Obviously, private key is known only to that particular corresponding person. Now, so what is that we are able to achieve? We could achieve confidentiality. We could achieve confidentiality or not? Because even if Eve captures it, Eve cannot do anything because Eve needs the private key and private key is known only to that particular person. So, and hence we are able to achieve confidentiality, right? Then, what is that problem that we could overcome in the case of symmetric key? So, we are able to mitigate the challenge of, mitigate the challenge of key distribution, key distribution in symmetric crypto systems, right? Because in order to perform encryption and decryption in symmetric crypto systems, you need to exchange the keys. Now, there is no need to exchange the keys, right? And even the maintenance of the keys, if I keep my key pair with me, that is fine enough, right? In case of symmetric, if I am communicating with n nodes, what I should do? I should maintain n symmetric keys, right? Is it not? With whomsoever I am interacting, whatever is that secret key with them, I should maintain, I cannot repeat it, right? Now in this case, now say take an example, Alice and Bob, imagine there is one more guy called Darth. Darth want to send a message to Bob, what Darth would do? Now imagine there is another guy called Darth to send a message to Bob, what he will do? Bob will, uh, Darth will use Bob's public key and once Bob receives it, Bob will decrypt with private key of Bob. So, the key management is very much easy, number one. Key distribution problem with the case of symmetric, you could minimize or you can overcome. Now, what is that? issue that comes here. Okay. What is that we said Alice knows Bob's public key. Okay. How? How? How Alice knows that this is the public key of Bob? So, the point is that, what is that it is another dimension to this is authentication. What is meant by authentication? How the nodes knows the public key of other nodes in authentic manner. When I say authentic manner, what is the challenge that comes here is that man in middle attack, okay? So somebody sits in between like Eve, when Alice is trying to get the public key of Bob, Eve takes the public key of Bob and pushes his public key to Alice. So what is that is compromised here is the authentication. How do we know what is the authentication? So, let us see. Imagine if encryption is happening like this. 
Alice, okay, let me go this way. Okay, encryption is happening in this way. Alice, Bob, what they have? Key pair, PUB and PRB. Okay, now uh, encryption is happening in this way. What Alice did was, Alice created, Alice created the cipher text with the help of, with the help of her private key. What is that? Alice created the cipher text with the help of private key. Now, it is sent to Bob. Bob decrypts it, that particular cipher text with the help of Alice public key. So, now you see for encryption and decryption purpose what is used? Receiver's key pair, sorry sender's key pair. In the previous scenario what are used? Receiver's key pair. Now what are used? Sender's key pair. So encryption with private key of sender and decryption with public key of sender, right? So that means one important thing one should understand is whenever you are doing encryption and decryption, you should use the keys from the same pair. You know, generally, you know, graduate students, especially those who are learning cryptography, they get often confused. Key from one pair and key from other pair. Uh, no, that's not the way. So you should use keys from the same pair. So either, either receiver's public key for encryption purpose and receiver's private key for decryption purpose or sender's private key for encryption purpose and sender's public key for decryption purpose. Now tell me at the receiver side, is it possible to decrypt or not? Decryption is happening with the help of public key of sender. Does receiver knows the public key of sender? Yes. Receiver knows the public key of sender. So decryption is always possible, right? Then encryption has happened with the private key of sender and anyway sender knows his private key. So obviously encryption is possible. Now when you look at this, can anybody attack this scenario? Can anybody attack this scenario? Can Eve decrypt this? Can Eve decrypt this or not? Decryption is with the help of public key of sender. Now can Eve decrypt it or not? Why only Eve? Anybody can decrypt because it is it is encrypted with the private key and decryption is with the public key. Public key is public. Anybody can decrypt it. So what is last? There is no confidentiality. So in this scenario, in this scenario, there is no confidentiality. But what is gained in this? Why we, if you, there is no confidentiality, why we are going for this? We are going for this. The reason is, look at the first scenario. Look at the first scenario. Bob is getting the message from Alice. How the message has come? By encrypting with the Bob's public key. And decryption is possible with private key of Bob. Now, how does that Bob knows? Who sent this message? 
whether Alice sent the message or Darth sent the message. How does, how does Bob verify it? Is there any way? Because anybody can encrypt with the public key of Bob and decryption is done by obviously by Bob, but Bob do not know who actually sent this message. Now look at the scenario, second scenario. In order to decrypt the message, what Bob needs? In order to decrypt the message, what Bob needs? Public key of Alice. Now what Bob understands? Who sent the message? That is called the authentication. So you are able to achieve authentication. You are able to achieve authentication in this scenario but last confidentiality. In the case of first scenario, in the case of first scenario, what is achieved confidentiality and what is lost or what is not there? No authentication. Okay. No authentication. Okay. So, how do I achieve both? Can I achieve both confidentiality and authentication? Is it possible? Is it possible? Yes, of course it is possible. Look at this. Alice and Bob. And tell me what is happening? Your message, okay, say take an example, it is P. What happened? The message is encrypted with the help of, with the help of, with the help of private key of, of the sender. Sender's private key known to the sender, so first, you encrypt with the help of sender's private key. So encrypting with the help of sender's private key and decrypting with the help of sender's public key, what is that you achieve? Authentication, right? So you can achieve authentication. Now, when you encrypt it with private key of the sender, whatever you get is the intermediate cipher text intermediate cipher text that intermediate cipher text is encrypted with that intermediate cipher text is again encrypted with with what what is this public key of receiver Okay, so you perform encryption two times, once first with the private key of sender, then with public key of receiver, what you achieve? Confidentiality. Now what is there in the communication channel? The cipher text that whatever you have encrypted with the public key of receiver. Now. That particular cipher text, if somebody wants to break, what is that they need? They need private key of the receiver, which you know we are assuming that private is he is kept secret. So in the communication channel, you have the cipher text which is actually encrypted with the sender's public key. Right? Now at the receiver side, what you do? The reverse process for this particular encryption. What is the last encryption that is done? The last encryption is done with the help of public key of the receiver and hence the decryption, decryption with private key of receiver. What you get is intermediate cipher text, that particular Y right the why you get 
right now how do i decrypt y how do i decrypt y with the help of what is that it is done the first one you have done with the private key of sender so decrypt with public key of sender so what you get is both confidentiality and authentication both are able to be achieved while uh, doing the communication right so this is about fundamentals of public key cryptography but what is that it is main root is that first of all first of all at alice side what is needed alice side what is needed key pair key pair at bob side what is needed again key pair imagine there is darth what is needed key pair so that means what is that important for public key cryptography algorithm is that first of all i should be able to generate i should be able to generate the key pairs what type of key pairs number 1 when i generate the key pair i should be able to encrypt with one key and be able to decrypt with another key and first of all most important thing is your pua is equal to pra or not equal to pra so first of all these two key pair, keys in the pair should not be equal pua is not equal to pra right because you are keeping one public number 1 encrypting with one key should be able to allow you to perform decryption with another key that is another important parameter and and above all that when one key is made public the other key should not be able you somebody should not be able to calculate infer deduce the other key because you kept one key as public you kept one key as public and attacker should not be able to calculate from public key attacker should not be able to deduce infer the private key if it is if it is out right your entire security ball game is out that what is the these things so asymmetric algorithms rely on one key for encryption but all together are different the other key should be different pua pra should be different when i say different they are not related they should be related or not related if it is not related how will you be able to perform encryption and then perform the decryption you understand so they should be related but having such relation having such relation will not allow the should not allow the attacker to calculate are you able to understand they should be related otherwise your decryption is not possible so that's what so encryption and happening with uh, key uh, and decryption is happening with a different key but they are related okay so number 1 what are the characteristics it should be computationally infeasible knowing one key able to calculate the other key it should be computationally infeasible and either of the keys can be used for encryption other one can be used for decryption what is meant by that you have noticed in the first scenario we have used public key for encryption purpose and private key for decryption purpose and in the second scenario what we did private key is used for encryption purpose and the public key is used for decryption purpose so you should be able to play in the way whatever we want right these are the important characteristics right 
then most popular algorithm is RSA algorithm, right? RSA is the most popular widely used public key encryption algorithm. Number one, it was invented in 70s, late 1970s and what type of uh, uh, mode it is? It is a block cipher. What does it mean? It divides the plain text, performs operations such as dividing it into multiple blocks. Okay. And then so far if you have noticed DES, are we playing with the numbers or alphabets? In the case of AES, what you did was you took the plain text, there was some S box operation. What was that S box operation did? That S box operation has converted or mapped your entire plain text to what size matrix? You remember 16 class 16 matrix? What were that? There are 256 numbers, hexadecimal numbers. So you played with the numbers. In the similar manner, the RSA also plays with the numbers which are integers between 0 to some n. Okay, you need to convert your plain text to integers so that you play with them. Okay, and you can have the block size of 2024 and more is the size, more is the strength for the key. Okay, and fundamentally, if you look at the symmetric ciphers such as AES and DES, there is no mathematical problem on top of that you know these ciphers are designed. Whereas in the case of RSA, there is a fundamentally, a, a fundamentally a mathematical problem which so far people could not identify a computationally feasible algorithm. I repeat, RSA is rooted on a mathematical problem for which there is no computationally feasible algorithm. What is that? The point is that there is a problem in uh, mathematical literature wherein which it is difficult to find the, the prime factors of a large number. Okay. So there is no computationally feasible algorithm. When we say large numbers, we are not referring to one digit, two digit, three digit, rather we are talking about digits of magnitude 200 digits. 300 digits, right? So, in terms of bit, you can think that 1024 bit, 2048 bit and more. We are referring to the numbers of that magnitude, okay? If you fundamentally look at the RSA algorithm, RSA has three components. One is key encryption, key generation, encryption and decryption. These are the three components the RSA algorithm has. If you look at the AES and DES, no, you get the key and then key expansion algorithm are there or key scheduling algorithm are there, but you do not have key generation, right. So typically this is the algorithm of RSA. What the algorithm says, choose or generate two large distinct prime numbers, okay. identify, generate two large distinct prime numbers. When we say large, when you look at the book, book will have always two digits numbers, 17 like that. Whereas in reality, in practice, they are all talking about the numbers of magnitude 200 digits of so or so. Then what you do is? you calculate their product of these two prime numbers okay, and call it as n. Once you did that, find for the n value, for that particular n value, find Euler's totient value. Okay. What is meant by Euler's totient value? For a particular n, what is Euler's totient value? The number of positive integers less than n 
and relatively prime to n. Okay, that means pick from 1 to that particular number n, what are all the numbers that are relatively prime to n. So, for that purpose you check the GCD value of 1 and n, GCD value of 2 and then n. So, you find out how many number of positive integers are there, such integers. So, typically psi of n can also be calculated as p minus 1 into q minus 1. Now, I suggest you guys check why psi of n is directly calculated as p minus 1 into q minus 1 that you please check the William Stallings has the solution. Okay. Then second next step is select a random integer e. What is the condition for selecting such integer? e should be less than psi of n and again e should be relatively prime to psi of n. So, select such number. Then once you did that step, the final step is calculate a number integer d which is multiplicative inverse of e. Okay. So, this particular d is multiplicative inverse of e at mod psi of n. So, calculate d and similarly the d also should have to satisfy the condition that it should be less than psi of n and d should be relatively prime to psi of n. Now, there is an algorithm called extended Euclidean algorithm to calculate this particular multiplicative inverse of e. Okay. Now, these are the around 6 steps of RSA. With this what is that you have got now? When you notice you have n, what is n? Product of 2 prime numbers. What is e? e is randomly chosen integer which is relatively prime to psi of n. These two values n comma e are regarded as public key and the key and the d value that is calculated which is multiplicative inverse of e at mod psi of n is considered as the private key. Okay. Now, what are these 6 steps? With By calculating these 6 steps what we did? We have done the key generation process. So, these 6 steps are meant for key generation. Once you do that, what is the next step? Encryption and decryption. Now, tell me, now tell me E and D, they are related or not? They are related. They are related. D is multiplicative inverse of E at mod psi of n. Now, the point is among these two, which is known public? E is known public, right? Then, is it n known public? n is also known public. You see what is the public key? n comma e. Right? Having known n comma e in order to calculate d what is needed? You need p q values because, because in order to calculate d what is that you need? You need psi of n. What is psi of n? p minus 1 into q minus 1. So, you need p q values. What is the problem we said? The problem what we said is that there is no computationally feasible algorithm that calculates for a given integer. What is the given integer here? n. What is that we are trying to find? The prime factors. What are they? p q values. Okay. So, there is no computationally feasible algorithm to calculate for a given integer n the its prime factors p q values. There is no algorithm. Okay. If tomorrow if the algorithm comes, what will happen? RSA is out. Number one. Number two, people talk about this quantum cryptography. Quantum computers have the ability to crack this problem. 
okay now so the point is strength of rsa lies with the fact that there is no so far computationally feasible algorithm to calculate for a given integer the prime factors of it okay so now when once you have these things what is that we are doing we are doing encryption process how do you do the encryption it is fairly simple step c is equal to m power e mod n encryption has happened with the public key or private key huh? public key what is public key e comma n what is private key so c is equal to m power e mod n where m is the plain text okay how do you do the decryption m is equal to c power d mod n okay that's all this is the rsa algorithm if you look at the whole ingredients of the algorithm initially p value q value are the prime numbers they are chosen by the uh, uh, individual and they are kept private is it that they are made available anywhere no now you calculated the product of these prime numbers and called it as n and you made it as public right and you have chosen a e value which is relatively prime to psi of n and you made it as a public then you calculated the d value which is a multiplicative inverse of e and you kept it private these are the variables of the rsa algorithm right yeah so when you look at the illustration of R, uh, rsa with the illustration that what we did with aes and des somebody feels that rsa is fairly simple you know you took lot of time to explain des and aes looks there are so many steps of substitution permutation operations doing multiple number of rounds there is a key scheduling algorithm right so symmetric slow when i look at the number of steps a symmetric key is very fast but when you look at any public key cryptography algorithm they are relatively slow when compared with the symmetric algorithm so rsa is slower than other algorithms if you notice des is approximately 100 times faster than rsa okay so where is this slowness has come or or why these are uh, this one is the main culprit is the key generation process okay it is the key generation process that makes the uh, uh, this one uh, slow now when you look at just to give you a feel of uh, you know we said 1024 bit 2048 bit you know if you put a if you want to display a 2048 bit number in a decimal format this is the number one number this is one number which is a 2048 bit and it is in its decimal format so you can think of such type of numbers such type of length numbers and arithmetic operation on them number 1 multiplication number 2 to the powers calculating to the powers so all that okay so people are able to crack the rsa algorithm for lower sizes keys 512 bit and so even 768 bit and all that's why people are going now minimum standard is 1024 bit length a key for rsa right so we will pass here uh, we got key t madam we have t right so are you able to get the feel of public key cryptography algorithms right earlier yeah? we will continue then okay so apa idi break panni ninga okay so next we will next we have another
public key cryptography algorithm, popular algorithm called Diffie-Hellman key exchange. Okay. Similar to your RSA, Diffie-Hellman key exchange is rooted to one fundamentally a mathematical problem wherein which there is no computationally feasible algorithm to calculate discrete logarithms. Okay, discrete logarithms. And by the way, in fact, Diffie-Hellman is the first published public key algorithm than RSA. Okay, Diffie-Hellman needs understanding of one particular mathematical aspect called primitive root of a prime number. Okay, we all know what is a prime number. What we are trying to define is primitive root of a prime number p. How do you define it? Primitive root of a prime number p is the one whose powers modulo p generates all integers from 1 to p minus 1. Okay. What does it mean? Primitive root of a prime number p is the one whose powers modulo p generates all integers from the range 1 to p minus 1. Now imagine, I have the prime number 7, okay, and 3 is its primitive root, 3 is its primitive root, why? Because all its powers, what is meant by all its powers, 3 power 1, 3 power 2, 3 power 3, 3 power 4 and so on up to when, up to this prime number minus 1. What is the prime number I have? 7, 7 minus 1 that is 6. So, 3 power 1, 2 whatever the p minus 1, 3 power 6 at mod 7, what are the values I am getting? If you notice, you see 3 mod 7, 3, 3 square mod 7, 2, 3 cube mod 7, 6, 3 power 4 mod 7, 4, 3 power 5 mod 7, 5, 3 power 6 mod 7 is 1. So, what are all these numbers? The numbers ranging from 1 to p minus 1. Is it in that order of 1 to p minus 1? No, it can be in any order. Order you need not worry. But the result, if you notice, primitive root power, primitive root powers mod that prime number gives you the values in the range from 1 to p minus 1. Okay. Right, this, this definition you remember. Then one, once you have this, what it says? It says, imagine you have for any integer b and you have a prime number p and there is a prim, its primitive root a. What is that you have? An integer b, a prime number p and corresponding primitive root of the prime number a. Then we can find an unique exponent i in a way that b is congruent to, all of you, I think you are aware of this particular symbol which is, okay, it is not equal, it is not equal, is it equals? No, it is congruent. What is the difference between equals, equivalent and congruent? 5 is equivalent to 5, right? 5 is equivalent to 5, 1 is equivalent to 1, right? I am saying 1 and 13 are equal. Can I say that? No. 1 is a different number, 13 is a different number. But I can say 1 and 13 are congruent, okay, at mod 12. That is all your 24 hour clock and 12 hour clock if you notice, you know, especially railway timetable and all, 13 hours is afternoon 1, we are, that means 1 and 13, we are, they are equal at what? At mod 12, right? So the congruence, congruence has a different meaning and equivalent has a different meaning. So this is B is congruent to A power I at mod P. So, now what is that definition we says? 
Imagine you have an integer for any integer b and there is a prime number p and its corresponding root of the prime number a, then what is that it says? We can find an unique exponent i in a way that b is congruent to a power i mod p. Now this particular exponent i is referred as discrete logarithm of b for the base a at mod p. Okay? This is referred as that particular i is referred as discrete logarithm of b for the base a at mod p. How do you write that? D is i is equal to discrete logarithm of b for the base a at mod p. Okay, this is how you do you write. Okay, once you know this concepts, this is what is Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. As the name itself says, the purpose of this particular algorithm is the purpose of this particular algorithm is key exchange. Where the problem of key exchange comes? Hmm? Correct. When you are implementing symmetric encryption algorithms, what is needed? Key need to be established, key need to be exchanged. So, Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm is meant for the purpose of exchanging the symmetric keys. Okay. Now, what are the steps of the algorithm? The step of the algorithm starts with two publicly known numbers p and a. What are p and a? p is the prime number, a is its primitive root. They are known publicly, globally, p and a. Now, there are two communicating nodes, Alice and Bob. What Alice did? Alice selected a random integer called xa and the condition is xa is less than the prime number and from that Alice calculated ya. How Alice has calculated? Primitive root to the power xa mod p. What is the primitive root? a. Will Alice knows that or not? The reason is it is known publicly. And what Alice did? Primitive root powers, what is the power value? xa. What is the xa? The Alice selected random integer okay, and mod p. Next, what Bob did on the Bob side? Bob also, so by the time this step, the Alice has xa, ya, right? Now, what Bob did? Bob has selected a random integer called xb and from that Bob calculated yb in the same manner. What is the manner? Primitive roots power the xb value at mod p. Both sides they have calculated, Alice has calculated xa, yya, Bob has calculated xb, yb. x values kept secret y values got exchanged, x values got kept secret. So, Alice kept xa as secret, Bob keeps xb as secret. Alice shares ya to, ya to Bob, Bob shares yb to Alice. So, yb from Bob to Alice, ya from Alice to Bob. That means they made public. Okay. Ya is made public, yb is made public. Now, what Alice did? Alice calculated yb power xa mod p, yb power xa mod p and what Bob did? ya power xb mod p. Can they do that or not? Alice got public key value of Bob yb to the power private key of Alice mod p. Similarly, what Bob did? What Bob did? public key of Alice to the power 
प्राइवेट की ऑफ बॉब मॉड पी बोथ वैल्यूज लीड टू द कॉमन वैल्यू विच इज के हाउ द डेरिवेशन पार्ट प्लीज चेक इट इज देयर इन द विलियम स्टैलिंग्स बुक यू टेक एनी वन एस्पेक्ट सो फ्रॉम वाई बी पावर एक्स ए मॉड पी वेन यू डिराइव वॉट यू गेट इज वाई ए पावर एक्स बी मॉड पी बोथ वैल्यू शुड बी सेम नाउ वेन यू लुक एट द कम्युनिकेशन चैनल डज द कम्युनिकेशन चैनल हैज दिस कॉमन वैल्यू के दिस दट के इज गेटिंग एक्सचेंज बिटवीन अलिस एंड बॉब नो इन फैक्ट के वैल्यू गॉट डिराइव्ड k value got derived with the help of public key of the other node to the power private key at mod p so that means an attacker needs what private key of either of these nodes so getting the private key of either of these nodes is what problem the power calculating that power what is that power you have the private key values if you notice in the power what you have either x or you have xa so the power is here it is the i what is that i is referred as the discrete logarithm so there is no computationally feasible algorithm to calculate that particular power that is the strength of Which algorithm? Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. Okay. So there is a derivation part, so that you guys can do that and check it. Okay. So these are all various public key cryptography algorithm. So what we have discussed so far is RSA algorithm. Also, we have discussed Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm. Interestingly. you can also notice attacks on these algorithms not related to cracking these algorithms but the way these algorithms are getting implemented okay in the book you can find out there is a chosen cipher text algorithm on rsa how an attack is possible not because of you know cracking these prime numbers issue but the way it gets implemented similarly in the case of diffie hellman there is an attack called man in middle attack and when you look at the attack was possible not because of the vulnerability that is there or are uh, able to solve the mathematical problem but the way that algorithm gets implemented okay so these issues are happens because the way of implementation and hence these are all called side channel attacks okay they leak these information some pieces of information bits and pieces of information and then implement the attack okay so now again let us go back to the diffie hellman key exchange what is that we did with the diffie hellman key exchange we could we could what we did finally when you finish the algorithm what is that happened key key got established right you need to understand that key got established number 1 number 2 what is the other point we discussed public key algorithms are slower or faster slower than symmetric algorithms right so that is the reason why all practical implementations of cryptography algorithms what happens is symmetric encryption is implemented for confidentiality so only symmetric algorithms so then why we are going for asymmetric so the we go for asymmetric for key exchange 
Then I say key exchange, which key exchange? Symmetric key exchange. We said symmetric algorithms, there is a challenge, right? That is the issue, okay? Fine? Is that done? Are you able to follow? There are varieties of, uh, you know, asymmetric key algorithms, okay? So, you need to understand core philosophy of why we are going for what, okay? With this, we will pass. Please have a cup of tea, okay?